we are at the Zephyr OS booth here at Embedded World 2023, and uh, we've talked about Zephyr as a real-time operating system, and uh, if you've been following us for a while, we've talked quite extensively about Nordic products, um, and Nordic cellular IoT system and package is one of those things that runs Zephyr OS. But what does that mean when it comes to things in the wild? Uh, well, I'm here with uh, Jonas and Oliver, who are going to take us through an actual uh, real-life use of this uh, technology, uh, which is being used in the Deutsche Bahn, which will be used in the Intercity Express chains here in Germany. So, Jonas, what is the uh, what's the reasoning behind using Zephyr OS and the hardware that's on the uh, technical side of this? Yeah, I'm working for a hardware vendor for Fitech as a firmware engineer. And for us, it's always important to have a vendor neutral uh, operating system, which we can use for several different SOCs. In this case, we use a Nordic NRF9160 as a system and package. And we wanted to we use the NRF9160 because it offers a full solution for cellular IoT for connecting sensors um, in one small package. Plus, with the support of Sapphire, we have a driver support, um, plus all the layers, the network layer up to MQTT and, and certain application layers. Excellent, yeah. And, um, and so, uh, w when it comes to something like this, presumably, since it's going to have to be um, in place for quite a while and it has very specific power usages as well, um, it, is, is that one of the benefits of having a, like a, a real-time operating system like Zephyr? And, uh, you have a real control over the resources and you know you can kind of trust it to run in a way that maybe you couldn't with different kinds of like uh, processing uh, units, for example. Um, so, uh, is that one of the reasons that you decided to choose something like that? Yeah, exactly. Like, there are applications which do not have an RTOS, and on the other side, there are applications which use Linux for single board yeah. computers. And Linux, on one side, has too much, needs too much power. Yeah. Um, and the RTOS still uses less power if it's, if it's very well managed. And you still have a lot of uh, more flexibilities and freedom to, to, uh, uh, to run certain uh, things in different threads. Sure, yeah, and, um, and as mentioned at the very start of this interview, one of the things that's uh, so exciting about this is that the exact um, software and hardware level that you were using um, is now actually going to be deployed and used in the Deutsche Bahn in the Intercity Express trains. So, um, Oliver, how is um, how's what Jonas just talked about translated into what you're holding in your hands right now? <laughs> okay, uh, so we, we've got this PCB with a Nordic microcontroller, yeah. which is an ARM RISC processor, an integrated chip with uh, radio, with LTE, which is nice because it can work with very low power, so it will work for months uh, with a single battery charge, yeah. which is extraordinary. So you can only do that with a um, low power uh, microcontroller like the Nordic, because if you have dual chips, dual, sen uh, dual microcontrollers, mm -hmm. then you have to power both uh, down, and yeah. then you have to uh, restart them again. So we only turn the system on for a very brief period, and then uh, it goes into sleep mode as fast as it can. It has a multitude of sensors, so there's a pressure sensor, there's a, an accelerometer, there's an NRF reader, all in this case integrated. So that's why we need an RTOS real-time operating system. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and just so it's completely clear for everyone watching, um, what is this hardware actually set to do in the train? What, what is its physical use case? Yeah. So it's not in the train, but yeah. it's on the train. So it's fitted onto the train when the wastewater is disposed. Okay. So uh, the tanks of the trains, of course, they after a certain time, they fill up with wastewater from the restaurants, from the toilets, and uh, then they have to be emptied. And this is a process which is, in principle, error prone. So yeah. something can go wrong. And it rarely goes wrong, but if it does, then nobody notices it. Uh, because it's a manual process. And uh, the Deutsche Bahn, the railway operator, they want to monitor, and they want to follow, they want to make sure that everything is nice and everything is fine and that all the tanks are empty because otherwise the passengers will not be able to, the, to use the bathrooms. And that's why we are monitoring that. So it's connected to, to the railway when, it, when the tank is emptied yeah. and the pump is connected to the other side. So yeah, this is the side of the train, yeah. this is the side of the pump. I and see. it sits okay. in between yeah. Yeah. and it looks what is going, coming yeah. through. It's not a camera, but it's a, it's a bit exactly. similar. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it is a really fascinating thing because one of the things that I, I am certainly guilty of is talking about the theory behind how these things could work um, and instead of actually looking at like in the real world use cases for it. And this is a very specific, but as you say, um, a, an essential use case because it's something that is error prone and you can miss it when it does go wrong. And we're talking, talking about the Deutsche Bahn here, which is when something goes wrong, that is costing thousands, if not millions, whenever it does. 
Um, so thank you both for giving me the time to talk about this today. It's really fascinating to find this out. Um, if you would like to know anything more about um, Zephyr OS and the system and package they're using in this, along with uh, any more details that I can get about the actual project itself, I'll make sure they're linked in the video description below and in the blog piece that will be uh, accompanying this video. Guys, thank you so much for your time. Have a great conference.